Folks, in this demonstration, I will be showing two things. One is how to set up your STL2 environment, followed by using a TNG image to create a sprite for game development. So the first step you have to create is a new project, which I've done, which is called Game Sprite. For this project, I've created a folder called Assets. In the Assets folder, I've got two different PNG files over here. Moving along, I've also gone to the CMake Build Debug folder and copied and pasted these files, which is the libsdl2, uh, truetypefont.a, sdl2.dll, sdl2image.dll, and truetypefont.dll. Just for your benefit, I have downloaded these directly to my C drive. Moving along, I've gone ahead and created a CMake module called findstl.cmake. findstl.cmake is a file that's going to assist the compiler to include the header files and execute the code accurately. In my CMake list file, I've gone ahead and included the paths to the STL environment. As I had shown, it's in the C drive STL2 folder. I will then find the packages, include the directories, do similar thing for the STL2 type font headers, and then the STL image headers. Finally, I must link my target libraries so everything works accurately. So we'll go ahead and execute the code, which is Game Sprite 2. Uh, let me just bring the code up over here. So let's execute this code and see what it does. It's gone ahead and built the program. And this is the outcome. So as you had seen, there were two different PNG files that are being displayed in this manner. So looking at the code over here, I'll just move this to the side. We've got the um, header file set up. We've got the image file to import these uh, PNG files uh, that were in the assets folder. I've gone ahead and executed the main function and initialized the STL environment. And if, if anything fails, then I have to catch the STL uh, errors and exceptions and then display that. Uh, we've gone ahead and created the STL create render window. Uh, Brightsheet has been used to load up and display this in this manner. I've set various uh, color keys over here, and if anything fails again, just throw an error and uh, buffer everything up so we can get very smooth transition and very high speed graphics displaying. And then I've put everything into a while loop and started to handle the STL events, uh, put a frame delay as we had seen in the uh, setup over here. We have a frame delay of 1000 by 60, so really smooth 60 frames per second graphics execution. Moving along, there's various if loops that are being executed. Last but not least, we must destroy any of the objects that we have gone ahead and created. So that's one example of using the STL2 environment for game development. Let's go ahead and take a look at another uh, C program that I've got. So let me just go ahead and update this main.c. Once that's happened, I must load the c make changes back to the compiler my main c dot program is over here it's going to just browse various images from my ai artwork folder on my c drive the execution has occurred and here's the program so with this one i've put in the ability for the end user to click on the arrow keys left and right so they can Go to the various images. Have a quick look at the AI artwork folder that I've got. Just different images in there that it's going to show. So again, this is all about setting up your STL2 environment.
two different pieces of code main.c and game sprite both have different functionality let me close that let me go ahead and do that so again, at a very summary and high level perspective, your first step is to download the SDL2 environment. So just go to the sdl2.org website and you can go ahead and uh, get this information. As you can see, I've downloaded the SDL2 into this folder and I'm using the x86-64 Mingwing and at that, Moving along, I've gone ahead and added a find stl2.cmake file. Uh, so that's in my cmake module folder. So you have to go ahead and create this new directory or this new folder, add a new file, uh, and put the code in there. The cmake list file must be updated so that the paths have been set up. And once that is all done, don't forget to copy the DLL files, right? So you've got these various DLL files that need to be uh, placed in the CMake build debug folder. Once that is all done, hopefully everything should work. Uh, code will run and it will definitely compile and create the outcome. As we can see, there we go. Again, the SDL2 environment is very powerful, very fast, and is used for uh, gaming. And let me go ahead and update my CMake file and run the other program, which is Game Sprite. Game Sprite 2. Fire up this code. It's done the build. Build is finished. And we've seen this code running before let me see what the so i have put another file here just while i was setting up the environment let me see if this is also building correctly yep that's a fast build ah so this code is not optimized as you can see it's it's pretty laggy some of the code was so it's traversing infinitely and hanging up so that's why i created a game sprite 2 and up opt and optimized it using my favorite ai tool set so i'm just going to kill that and go back to two so i hope that helps this is just the introduction to setting up your sdl2 environment uh, creating a program where you can display images or you can use another program for game development. Thank you so much for joining. Have a